Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. I thought I'd do a few more gate drive transformer experiments. Because, although I've had trouble with this in the past, there is light at the end of the tunnel. Now let's just um, have a bit of a close-up of this little setup we've got here. We have here a little square wave oscillator, which also can be audio modulated, but we won't go into that right now. That can go from about 20 kilohertz to about 90 kilohertz. Here we have a little push-pull output stage, just to buffer the chip so the chip doesn't have to work so hard. And that is connected to this big-ass microwave oven capacitor, because it's the only one microfarad non-electrolytic capacitor that I have on hand. I do have some others, but I just couldn't be asked to find them, so that will do for now. And one of my failure dr gate drive transformers. And the output of that is connected to the scope. Now it's a good idea to use, now it's always a good idea to put a capacitor between the output stage and the transformer because even though this is only being going to be pulsed at about 12 volts, We'll get about a hundred volts out of that if it's pulsed with DC. So, must use a capacitor. And we'll go into why adding a capacitor converts it from DC to AC in just a minute. Anyway, we'll turn this on and we'll monitor the output on the scope. And when I turn the oscillator on, you might be able to see as I turn the frequency up and down that we get a waveform that is just completely unusable. I mean, this should be a square wave, and as you can see, it's more of a sort of a sawtooth wave. It's just not good. There's absolutely no way I could use that as a gate drive transformer. But now, I've decided to do some experiments with different types of cores. Now, you can see I've wrapped some wire around this core here, which is half of a flyback core, and with this core, again, starting out looking like pretty much the same thing, as I adjust the frequency, you can still see it's not really giving me the type of output that I need. However, let's put the other half of the flyback core, which unfortunately got broken somehow, but let's put the other half of this flyback core on and look at the waveform. Look at that, it's a complete transformation. It's almost a well, it was almost a total complete square wave until it fell over. You can see that it's a lot more square wave now. And that's more like what it should be. And unlike with the previous core, nothing is getting hot. Everything is running nice and cool. Well, I've glued this core back together and while we wait for it to dry, I think I'm going to explain a bit about gate drive transformers. So I'll just... Um, quickly explain how this works, although this will probably take up most of the video. And of course, if you want to skip this bit, then be my guest. But anyway, what we've got here is a chip with a single output. Um, doesn't have to be anything specific. Got it connected up to the um, gate drive transformer primary through a capacitor. And I've only drawn in the bits that I'm going to talk about. So in the chip here, you can see the pulse generator and the two output transistors. When the pulse generator is outputting a current, it turns this transistor on and this transistor off. So this transistor is like a switch that's open and this transistor is like a switch that's closed. So the power can go into the chip, through this transistor, and into this capacitor. And as it charges this capacitor, we get a pulse on the primary of the gate drive transformer. Now, when the pulse generator is not outputting anything, we see exactly the opposite happening. This transistor turns on and this transistor turns off, so this one is like the switch that's closed and this one is like the, sorry, this one is now like the switch that's open and this one is like the switch that's closed and the capacitor can discharge itself through this transistor and as it does so, we get another pulse in the coil only this time it's in the opposite direction, so effectively we get an AC waveform at the primary of the gate drive transformer. Okay, this is your typical half-bridge circuit, and again, I've only drawn in the parts that I'm going to say about. So we have the oscillator chip here, which is usually something like an SG3525. It's got two outputs, 180 degrees out of phase with each other. Got a capacitor here to couple the gate drive transform and the chip together. 
And when we get a pulse out of this output, we at that pulses the gate drive transformer in one direction, and when we get a pulse out of this output, it obviously pulses the gate drive transformer in the other direction. And on the end of that, we've got the MOSFETs and the whatever it's powering, usually a flyback primary or a Tesla coil or something like that, and a couple of capacitors, and this part of the circuit is the actual half bridge. So when the gate drive transformer is pulsed one way, the this side of the out, um, this side of the secondaries becomes positive, so we get a positive charge on this MOSFET and a negative charge on this MOSFET, so this MOSFET turns on and the power goes through it this way and into the coil and into this capacitor, like that. And when the gate drive transformer gets pulsed the other way, the negative is on this side of the secondaries and the positive is on this side so this gate gets charged positively and this gate gets charged negatively. So this one is on and this one is now off and the current goes in through this capacitor, then through the coil that way, then through the MOSFET and into ground. So we end up with an AC waveform at that coil there and that's basically a half bridge circuit. So that's how they work, although I have had a lot of trouble actually getting one of these to work, but um, well, let's see if I can make this work. Okay, the transformer is ready now. As you can see, I've wound the wire onto it. I'm so confident that this is not going to make the chip overheat. I've connected it directly to the chip's outputs without any kind of transistor buffer stage. Let's see what kind of a waveform we get. If it's a spiky waveform, I'll turn the power off immediately because I know it's sucking a lot of power. Okay, there we go. I don't know if you can see that, how well you can see that on the scope because this camera seems to have a blind spot for actually looking at the oscilloscope screen but you can see we've got pretty good output although you can barely see it on the camera of course it's not perfectly square but there is absolutely no such thing as a perfect transformer but i think this is going to work pretty good i'm just going to test to see if the chip is warm at all it's quite warm but um i would continue to let that run because it's nowhere near it's nowhere near at the temperature where I'm thinking, oh my god, I've got to turn it off immediately because it's going to start to smoke or anything like that. No, I think that's perfectly safe at the temperature it is right now. Okay, I've built the half bridge and you might want to sit down or have someone standing by with a defibrillator or something because this works. I kid you not. So first I'll turn on the oscillator. Now make sure I'm out of the way of the camera. Now we'll turn this on. There we go. There's the output from the half bridge. Now, I have to make sure that I'm arcing this when it's on because if I don't, this flyback will spew out corona from just about every possible place and uh, with this particular driver. I don't really want to damage the flyback. I'll just do this very, very, very briefly. As far as audio modulation is concerned, I'm having to use the camera's microphone here because I'm using the tape to play back the audio. But as far as audio modulation is concerned, that's about as loud as I can get it before it's over modulating. And my wire's smoking as well. Oh. I think I'm going to have to use a thicker ground wire. quite happy with it. Even though the audio modulation isn't all that good, I'm quite happy that this is a successful experiment. Also I can see some smoke coming from around where these capacitors are. I don't think this wire is thick enough for them. MOSFETs themselves are stone cold. Definitely going to need thicker wire though. F***ing camera was paused the whole time while I thought it was recording. So I'm going to have to do this bit all over again. Anyway, let's just have a brief overview of what we have here. This is the SG3525 oscillator and my camera battery is running out. That is connected 
to the gate drive transformer which is made out of a old flyback core it's connected through this one microfarad capacitor which is the only one microfarad one well nearly one microfarads anyway we'll replace that with a much smaller capacitor of the same value over here we've got the current limiting zener diodes and 22 ohm resistors to limit the voltage to 12 volts and that goes to the half bridge itself and here's the flyback and the primary I use is made out of six turns of wire and half bridge itself is powered off a modified microwave oven transformer and for those of you interested in the waveforms at each MOSFET oh there we go, this is the waveform at one of the MOSFETs and as you can see it's a very clean wave now let's have a look at the other MOSFET, if I can just get it on there and there we are pretty good almost square wave waveform